Well, we've arrived at Dorley and Sturchley Station, which is about the halfway point on this line. Now, before you think this is a restored platform, it isn't. This is a platform that's been rebuilt by the council to sort of recreate the effect of the station. As you can see, there's no actual station buildings either. Now, this station would have been identical to Maidley, with an identical looking station building about where I'm pointing now. And this is the upline. This used to be Sturchley Station and it was renamed to become Dorley and Sturchley Station, serving both communities. As you can see a really well preserved bridge and clearly very wide, serving that double loop here at Sturchley Station. It went down to a single track well before the line closed and that incidentally was well before beaching. Now as I look north up the track towards the town park, which I'm getting close to now, if we look to the right hand side, you can see the reservoir through the trees. And there are a number of these reservoirs. This is a result of that subsidence I was talking about, that really put paid to the canal. And it certainly didn't help the railway company either, but it wasn't the problems that the uh, canal companies encountered. One of the major tasks of course was to get the iron ore down to the foundries and get the coal moving and a canal was built by the Shropshire Union Canal Company. Rather ironically, the geology of the area, which made it a success, was also its downfall, because the area was subject to tremendous subsidence, partly from the mining, but partly from the geology of the area itself. This led to uh, lots of leakage from the canal, and also the reservoirs which fed the canal were struggling to keep topped up. The other problem with the canal was that it was on the inclines. It was up to the town park and down to Coalport. Now in order to overcome this problem, it was proposed to um, build a railway instead. Now how did they get over this problem with the canal not working? Eventually the ideas came up to build a railway instead. Uh, and there was a lot of rivalry between the railway companies just to the uh, west of here, the Great Western Railway were starting to build a line down through Horsay, down to Buildwiss and on to Much Wenlock and Craven Arms. And the LNWR wanted their own line and they bought part of the land, they bought a lease for part of the canal and it was proposed to build a railway. Now building a railway had lots of problems, especially with the inclines, but it was going to be better than the canal. Eventually the railway was built and finally opened in 1861 and I've been reading about the great celebrations they had in the Caledonian Hotel in Oaken Gates uh, which and showed that nothing's changed because it was all political speeches and actually very little was said about the railway, it was just the bosses wanting to up their game a little bit. There was little talk of any of the great feats that took place uh, in actually building the line. This was always a freight line to serve the iron ore industry, the collieries, but passenger services did open and uh, in 1862 all the stations were open. But it was never really a fantastically profitable line. There was only about six trains a day at its peak and these trains were only usually two carriages and passenger services eventually dwindled out in 1952 and freight services carried on in stages to a closure in 1964. Well the track's now reached Telford Town Park and uh, as part of the town park we have an attraction called Wonderland and we have some dinosaurs. Here in the town centre in the town park we've lost the track because of the development that's been done over the last 20-30 years and it's hard to believe that the track actually run through where I'm pointing now. From here we go north of the M54 to find three or four points where the railway used to run and again it's very difficult to find any evidence not because of more recent development but because of industrial development over the last 50 years, 50 to 100 years. And at this point looking north we lose the track completely now Telford is a town, it's a new town, which is a mixture of heritage areas and new town developments. None more so than you can see here, right in, directly in front of me now, is the new development, the new council building, and we have the town park to its left. To the right of the new development we have the shopping centre and the ice rink, and if I pan to the right we have 
the International Centre and behind the International Centre we have the modern estate of Hollingswood. As you can see, no trace of the railway line from now on. From here it's just finding a few points where the railway line went, but evidence now is virtually non-existent. I've come about a mile north from the last location, across the M54, and this is the dual carriageway which runs from north to south in Telford. Well, this was the railway line, and in fact this was the canal. The canal, of course, was converted into the railway, and the railway was converted into this road. Underneath the road, about half a mile down, is old is the old Oakengate station, which is what we're going to investigate now. Well, there's the dual carriageway up above us. It's hard to believe that this is what used to be Oakengate station. The platforms were along here, and unbelievably, there was a level crossing here. The change that's happened here is really quite striking. Well, I've now reached Hadley, which is right at the northern end of the line, and it's really hard to trace the railway here. There's very little evidence, but my researchers said that it came up this part here. This is actually looking south. This is just the last 200 yards now. A little bit of evidence of something industrial here. And the line across where the road is now, and down by that line of trees, up towards Hadley Junction. Well, we've arrived at Hadley Junction, and you can see the Stafford to Newport line, which the Coalport line joined onto. And if I pan southwards, you can see the line of the trees, and the line came up here and joined the Stafford to Newport line here. Here the trains went down to Wellington, where they terminated. For me this line is fascinating. The geology which created the success of the canal inevitably became its failure as well. The massive subsidence meant that the canal just became impractical. And then the building of the railway, with its steep inclines, and a railway that was never going to be a big success commercially in terms of passenger transport. It was very successful early on with the coal and the iron industry. But as time went on and industry declined, the line declined. Inevitably the line closed for passengers as it was never going to be viable and eventually well before beaching, closed to passenger services and eventually closed to freight as well. It's also a line steep with this rivalry between railway companies. This line was built partly as a rival to the Great Western Railway line that they planned to build through Horsehead. As it turned out, that line was built anyway. And that line is where I'm going to visit next.